truck. Wiggle out. Jump. Run. Somebody. I'm scared. I know. I'm gonna be there in your head talking to you the whole time. Truck. Wiggle out. Jump, Jump. when the truck slows down. Run. run. Somebody. You all right? Jack, listen to me. This is our chance. There it is, clip right there from Room, the book coming to life, the screenwriter and author of the original book. You see it right there, Emma Donahue. A pleasure to have you here on the BT Couch. Thank you. Congratulations on the movie being featured at the Vancouver International Film Festival tonight and winning People's Choice Award over at the Toronto Film Fest. You blown away? You surprised by the reaction? Absolutely. This is my first film. You know, this is a Cinderella goes to the ball moment. I can't believe how, how warm a response we're getting already. And I think a lot of it is due to Vancouver native Jacob Tremblay. I mean, did you see him in that scene? Terrific His, his eyes just look bigger every Every time I see that shot. His performance being praised in this. First question, do, does the movie do the book justice? I, my impression is that it's just as good as the book. It's, it's, they're each of them better in some ways because a book is more psychological. The book gives us several hundred pages of what Jack is thinking. So moment by moment, you know, all the little social observations in the second half, there's more data on what Jack is thinking. But in the film, you get to see him with a body, with a physical life, and he's so much a real, natural child. So it makes it way more moving, I think. And also in the film, you get to see Ma and what she, as a woman who's been held in captivity for seven years, years what she's going through so the film is much more of a two-hander and I think it gives a lot of fans of the book that whole extra aspect of things that we get to literally see her and how she makes her moment by moment decisions to survive and to raise her son as beautifully as she can in a locked room decisions decisions to me is that key word that really draws people in of what would you do if you were in this scenario what is the key challenge and what are the changes you need to make because one you write the book and then two it's you writing the screenplay giving it to the director Lenny Abramson in this case uh, what did you have to adjust to make sure the book was effectively portrayed. Oddly enough, the first half was easier. The first half is a technical challenge because you're in a locked room for 45 minutes. But I trusted that Lenny and his his cinematographer would find ways to film that such that it seemed like a big and interesting world to Jack. It didn't seem like a nasty locked room. But in the second half, you have to make far more decisions about what you'll see of the world because a book has time for anything. So Jack does a lot of going to the grocery store, seeing people out the window. You know, he meets his grandmother's book club. There's, there's time for him to encounter many, many people. In a film, you can't suddenly be introducing lots and lots of new characters. So we trimmed down that family. The mother now has no brother, no extra relatives. She's just got her mother, her father, and a new stepfather. So we brought it down to its core, the nuclear family, and we really follow the story of how she and Jack can possibly reintegrate after seven years. And you know, seven years of isolation, how do you effectively relay the headspace of a five-year-old, which you do so well in this book and no movie. Well, I cheated. I had one to hand. <laughs> My son was five when I was drafting the novel, and I paid him more attention than I ever have before or since. I followed him around. I even played a bit of Lego with him. I wrote down what he said. I observed his grammar in particular to try and get a few of those turns of speech. Um, so I, it was close observation of my son, basically. And although my son is not like the boy in the story because he's grown up in a world of plenty, I thought there are certain aspects of a five-year-old that are just universal. Five-year-olds across the world are sort of pragmatic, live in the moment. You know, they adjust to whatever crazy stories we tell them. They, they can believe in magic and in science at the same time. They just get on with tackling the problems of each day, and they have a, a buoyant, irrepressible spirit. You know, and when you talk about the five-year-old, I remember just reading a study that the average five-year-old asks 200 questions a day, so you know that sense of curiosity is there. But what do you think this story, the, the statement it makes about motherhood, because I think it's very interesting to say seven years of isolation, and for the parents out there trying to protect their kids from the dangers that exist, how did this story and statement of motherhood make you a stronger and, and more effective mother? Well, I think what it reminded me was that what kids really want is you, your time, your energy, your spirit of fun. They they may ask for the toys, but really what they're saying was, what they're saying is, I want to have fun. So I imagined that even in the limited resources that Ma has available to her in her locked room, you know, they're making great crafts out of toilet roll insides and garbage. And um, Brie and Jacob, by the way, made all the crafts in the room that you see. They, they, they did it all themselves as oh, a bonding wow. exercise. So there's this spirit of improvisation and fun. And that helped them to find moments of genuine humor in the middle of a pr pretty dark story. So there were a lot of laughs when we showed 
the film at TIFF because, you know, parent-child interactions have a kind of universal and warm and funny quality, even in a locked room. And, you know, as you described this, outside looking in, you could question, is this a crime thriller? But I think it's more a mother-son uh, love story of this dynamic with these two. Well, myself and the director, Lenny Abrahamson, we both have two small kids, and he used to fly over to London, Ontario, where I live, and we'd sit around the kitchen table talking over the script and talking about our kids all the time. We always saw this as a parenting story. I think men of our generation have have really taken on that role that women used to keep to themselves. The hands-on parenting, you know, the, the diaper changing, the, you know, feeding, the hands-on, and it's got all the pleasures that go with it as well as all the irritations and occasionally boredom. Well, you've given us many gifts through your words, and now we get to see it on the big screen. Emma, congratulations on all this success. I'm just thrilled to be here in Vancouver with it. It's one of my favorite cities. Oh, we'd love to hear that, and we'd love to see the fact that this movie gets its premiere tonight at the Vancouver International Film Fest. You see the Twitter handle and social media handles uh, down there.